Coach of Sydney Bulls here for another installment of our superintendent update, as always, where we check in once a month with Superintendent Dr. Eric Conti on what's going on with the schools and how it's all going. So, of course, I'm joined by Dr. Conti. How are you doing today? Doing well, Sydney. Thanks for having me. So, I figured this is our last opportunity to talk before May Town Meeting, mm -hmm. which is also known as our annual town meeting, which is where the budget and a lot of financial stuff gets discussed. It's kind of the big one. Yep. Do you, are you ready? Sure. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, it's pop quiz, we're speed running through all of the school related articles that are going before town meeting. We'll hear a little bit about them. I know town meeting members are gonna get the full rundown on May 13th and you know in the, in the days following, but we're gonna do a little preview. Sound good? Do my best. Okay, so we're, you know, this is not graded, so you know, but I feel like, I feel like you know what these are about. So first one right off the top, VHS HVAC repairs. What's mm -hmm. going on? Um, building is uh, what opened in 1970, roughly. So um, we have it's 365,000 square feet. We have the original HVAC systems, and we need to rebuild sort of two of the major units on the roof. And um, I know there are discussions about a new Burlington High School, but we have to keep this building functioning and running well uh, during the interim between now and whenever a new building is uh, decided or built or renovated or whatever. You anticipated my, my question on that one, because I mean the, the state of the, the HVAC system and the boilers is kind of one of the main issues at stake for the repair or replacement of the building. Yep. Um, but it could be like a decade potentially before there's a ribbon cutting on a new. Yeah, well, however, the yeah. building has to function. We right. have kids in it today, there'll be kids tomorrow. So um, yeah, it's, it's um, the balance between um, sort of the immediate functioning and needs with mm -hmm. uh, long-term investment in a new facility. Uh, the building has been maintained really well, as have these systems. They're all past their sort of expected useful life, um, but there are some that need to be rebuilt. Right, and then you know, right after that, you've got one uh, refurbishing the boilers at the high school as well, 150,579 to be precise yeah. for that one. Yeah, retubing. They're going to retube the boilers, which is something that they have to be inspected annually. They go through and look at all the tubes. I'm not a boiler expert, obviously, but uh, it's just uh, the systems here are very large, and um, they're very expensive to maintain. Burlington High School Fiber Connection, 43,599 bucks. Mm -hmm. What's going on? We, uh, part of it is actually to benefit BCAT because we currently have a line of sight uh, internet connection between here and Varsity Field. And um, we're going to uh, harden that connection. So that connection is gonna be a fiber connection. Um, my understanding is most of the fiber is already in the ground. Um, I think it's called dark fiber that they will activate and then they need to run some fiber as they get closer to the building but it will allow uh, better connectivity between here and varsity field for the broadcast of other games other events uh, at varsity field our sports bro broadcaster robert paris will be a fan of that one i think he will <laughs> uh burlington high school electric forklift about fifty thousand dollars yep um, the building, as I said, is the main distribution site, main loading dock for all six of our school buildings. Um, and it's, uh, they have to move lots of pallets of things. And the forklift is, I think, original to when the building was opened. Wow. They can't get parts anymore. And um, again, well used, well past its useful life. And um, time for a new forklift. What do you do with the old forklift? Um, I don't really know whether it's salvageable or not. I'm assuming there's someone who will come in and we will try to do what's best with our old forklift or scrap it or send it or sell it or do whatever we need to do with the old forklift. All right, TBD on that one. Yes, BCAT may need a forklift. No, you don't <laughs> need a forklift. But, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can. There we go. Um, Burlington High School music room flooring, 192,000. Right. So this was a warrant article three years ago. The uh, music and band room, it's actually two rooms, um, have a, a stadium layout that is non-handicap accessible, so students can't access the entire classroom. Um, so we were looking to make that change. The original quote we got was to fill in the stadium with cement, and that was $450,000, and we felt that wasn't the right uh, solution for us. Um, because of all the changes potentially in the building, the high price tag. Um, so we asked town meeting to reallocate that money towards the high school feasibility 
study, which they did, which we're grateful for. Um, this solution to the accessibility issue is um, using risers, and so they're they're temporary but permanent. So they can be utilized, but they also can be moved, and then the risers can be reused. So if, again, in 10 years you're saying we were to build a new high school that had a fully accessible classroom, um, we could use the risers uh, elsewhere on a stage, we could use them for graduation, we, we use risers quite a bit. So it would be an asset to the school district and to the community, um, and we feel it's a much better solution to the accessibility issue in the music classrooms. Makes sense. Um, coming to the end of the high school articles, uh, BHS carpet replacement. Yep. Again, we have a thousand teenagers running around. There's some carpet and there are places where it's ripped and once it gets ripped, it kind of becomes a trip hazard and gets worn out. And uh, what we find is if we do a better job maintaining the space the kids are in, they do a better job taking care of that space. So it's really important for us to Again, keep our bathrooms updated and clean and our hallways and our custodians do a wonderful job, but at some point carpets wear out and they need to be f replaced. And again, because we're thinking about a new high school doesn't mean we stop taking care of the high school that we are in. All right, we got some district-wide items. Uh, security updates, $82,000. Yep. Sounds like walkie-talkies, emergency buttons, comms devices. Mm -hmm. Is this is this like upgrading stuff we already have? Is this adding more layers? I think it's expanding some of the things we already have. Um, we're um, doing more training. We're using them more. I think more people um, need access. Communication is critical in safety um, situations, and so um, I, I think that's kind of where that warrant article is is coming from. And um, I. I know it's expensive and it's, uh, I, I hope we never have to use this stuff in the, um, for one of the reasons that it's purchased, but I still think we need to move forward with it. Dr. Conti, I want to pause here in our, in our pop quiz rundown here. This is something that, that I sort of feel or think as someone who's not in the school world, um, and I wonder if, if, if this is founded. I think, maybe I'll speak for more than myself here, for audience members who feel similarly or have similar questions or, or feelings, is that school districts are asked to do so much more now than they were 20, 50, years ago, however far back you want to go. Five years ago. Yeah, I mean, so like the, 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 all of the things that you're tasked with doing, it's just, it's just rocketed up. Am I right in, in feeling that or thinking that, witnessing that? Yeah, and, and I think we have obviously a growing diversity in our classroom, growing needs in our classroom. Um, I think schools are being relied on to provide a lot, sort of they call it wraparound services, where we're certainly trying to teach content, um, but also looking at the well-being, health of children, families, um, and... Um, and high-tech security and, and, services and, and, for six buildings. And safety and yeah. uh, privacy and, um, you know, many of those issues. Digital that, uh, services, mm -hmm. devices, sure. stuff that, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot with, you know, a budget that hasn't necessarily match that is that am i right about that or am um I well again i think the budget in burlington has matched that i think okay. this community is very generous and supportive of schools so we have we do have the ability to yeah. catch up but it's more it's more than just buying the stuff it's actually drilling it's actually getting professional development it's actually utilizing the equipment and working together so there's always a, a, a component that, it, again, it's more than just the radios, it's how to use the radios, when to use the radios. And again, we have a great relationship with the Burlington Police Department, our, you know, the Captain Hannafin, Detective Lyons, um, really have taken us through some tabletop exercises. The and school resource officers? Yes, mm -hmm. and really helped us do that. Captain Hannafin is not a school resource mm, officer, okay. but I think he oversees uh, okay. everybody and has, um, helped us um, with the scenarios that would surround um, certain s safety situations. Sure. Should we keep going? Yes. Okay. District-wide maintenance vehicle, vehicle 65,000 bucks. Yep. We have, again, I think six buildings. We have eight, 900,000 square feet to take care of. We have, I think, four or five maintenance folks and with only one essentially one vehicle, we have two vehicles, one transports uh, a lot of materials between the buildings and one maintenance vehicle. Um, 
it's just not efficient. We need a second maintenance vehicle so we can have two crews doing separate maintenance projects. Um, some of the guys are using their own vehicles and mm -hmm. they have to pack and unpack the vehicles and uh, having a maintenance vehicle will allow them to leave um, tools in there and just to be more efficient. So um, it's, it's we, we have the need and I think we can justify the need. All right, one of the larger items, district-wide curriculum review. Uh -huh. This is something that uh, Dr. Lisa Chen, the assistant superintendent, has been working on. Is this the same thing or is this something different? No, same thing. And it's w sort of, if <laughs> we, ha we have the list prioritized and I know this isn't the top priority, but this is always my top priority. So um, we need to jumpstart some of our curriculum review process. There's um, obviously some of the uh, curriculum work or most of the curriculum work annually is in the operating budget, but we, we really need to step back and look at our pre-K to 12 um, scope and sequence, curriculum resources and training, make sure we're aligned with state standards, and really it helps us make better decisions and um, more cost-effective decisions across sort of the entire uh, grade span of our, of our districts. I know that uh, Dr. Chen is, is looking at math and literacy sort of as the two primary areas, and, um, and having this warrant article really help us uh, focus. It requires time, and we have to bring people in um, after hours during the summer. It requires a lot of training. We have to bring people in from the outside. And again, those are costs that aren't normally covered in our operating budget. Okay, uh, 245000 for that one. Sounds like a lot of contractors and services and, and time. time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Um, Francis Wyman Generator, $95,000. Yep. Pretty, seems pretty straightforward. Yep, the generator's air is past its uh, useful life. We want to make sure that if the power goes out, we have um, backup power at the at the building for emergency lighting and, and other things that you can imagine. And again, large building, large generator. Um, and uh, again, relatively straightforward. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there's four for Marshall Simons Middle School here. Three of them kind of seem like we could take them all in one go. There's bathrooms, locker rooms, and furniture. Yep. Um, seems like the kind of thing that you just got to spend a lot of money sometimes to keep that stuff. Yeah, I think state. the questions about Marshall Simons have been, didn't you just uh, renovate right. the building? And uh, those areas weren't included in the renovation, so um, we th we're not re-renovating spaces we've already renovated. I think uh, the enrollment at the middle school has increased. I think we're trying to use every single space. Um, maintaining bathrooms is something that actually is really important and um, as I stated, uh, if students enter into a well-maintained clean bathroom, they treat that space better. Um, and so I think it's always important for us to keep up with that. And then I think the one of the locker rooms is being underutilized. They don't use locker rooms as they did when the school was built. And again, it wasn't a space that was renovated that we want to um, expand more instruction into. And then the last one you said was furniture. Uh, furniture. Yeah. So in the uh, the old shop areas of the middle school, they have um, workbenches that are affixed to the floor. Um, and we thought we could get away with them and we have for, I guess, seven, eight, nine years. And um, the space we need now have need tables that actually move or more dynamic uh, so we can create more maker space. So we just need um, new modern furniture. And again, we, we did reuse the existing furniture, um, but it's it's time we move on. Last one for Marshall Simons, critical building systems. What does that mean? Um, the Marshall Simons, again, was an addition renovation, so there's an older part of the building and a newer part of the building, and some of the systems um, have um, entered or come into use at different times, so uh, they don't really talk um, well to one another, mm. so you want the fire alarm to talk to the um, the door closers to potentially talk to the heating and cooling system. And so you have to invest basically in a computer that can speak to a bunch of different automated systems. Hmm. And um, again, not my area of expertise, but Mr. Cuna assures me that um, this will allow the building to um, be more efficient and to um, be smarter. We're coming to the end of our pop quiz here. So far, you're acing it. Um, Francis, or Francis, uh, Fox Hill Cafeteria Tables, 55,000. Yep, um, we have a uh, certain cafeteria table that we use at the elementary level. It's circular with built-in seats. It uh, is on wheels, it's easily moved, allows the custodians to clean more easily. A uh, circular table allows more socialization. Um, again, all good things. Um, I know we are 
asking for a new Fox Hill. Uh, these tables could either be used in the new Fox Hill, we're not looking at getting rid of them. If we wanted to buy new cafeteria tables with um, the new Fox Hill building, then we would reuse these tables uh, at the other school. So again, okay. it's, a, it's a very standard cafeteria table that we use. Fox Hill does not have those cafeteria tables now. They have long rectangular tables. The laminate's starting to come up. We've repaired them numerous times, but it's, it's time for us to get new cafeteria tables. I hear you anticipating some of what you expect town meeting to say on that one yeah. about um, why not wait and do this with the with the renovation yeah I mean, but you're saying you know might be three four right. years and um, right. we have health safety issues tomorrow so uh, we're trying to balance that out and um, I think those are very valid questions yeah I would ask the same questions Pine Glen fencing 25,000 yep there's an old fence. It's been um, <laughs> broken down with uh, snow plowing for many years. Uh, it's starting to rot. The posts are all bent. Um, we repaired it as much as we can. It's beyond repair at this point. So we're going to put a new fence in. Fencing is actually important. Um, because it helps delineate the space where kids are mm -hmm. and helps keep students safe mm -hmm. um, and really uh, keeps kids uh, on school property. There you go. Two more. Pine Glen Air Conditioning, Phase 2, Third, three, no, $322,000. Yep, uh, two years ago, we uh, town meeting approved a warrant article to uh, air condition Pine Glen. Um, similarly to the project at Francis Wyman, I think COVID hit, uh, prices skyrocketed, and so the initial estimate we got from a contractor um, couldn't fit underneath the warrant article. So instead of doing it piecemeal, we delayed, um, and um, we have a, a new price to do the work that we were doing initially. And so that's what phase two is. It's in a, a warrant article that'll allow us to do the project that was approved uh, two years ago. And again, really important to have climate control in our classrooms. Pine Glen can be really hot in the early fall mm -hmm. and in the late um, end spring, like late end of the year, and it does impact um, student learning. You just need to ask a Francis Wyman teacher if it's made a difference, and they would certainly tell you yes. Yeah, that checks out for sure. Final one, this is something that is not on the, 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 the list of school requests. This is something that you've been working with the town on to collaborate and not, this is sort of a, a, a school facility, but it's used by the community, so you're working with the community on this. Um, $6,270,000 for field work at Marshall Simons? I think it's $6.7 million and is the estimate that we have, and it's a, um, I think, again, um, two years ago, town meeting approved a field study. We were getting lots of requests from parents um, saying, boy, this field needs to be renovated, mm -hmm. this baseball diamond needs to be renovated. Um, this lacrosse field needs to be renovated and instead of sort of jumping around sort of asked for a timeout and said let's look at all of our fields mm -hmm. and put together a priority list which they did the first priority was Francis Wyman baseball field which again the warrant was approved last spring we're in the process of uh, renovating the baseball field that will be done after baseball season this season um, this was second on the list, and it's looking at uh, the field and track currently at Marshall Simon, mm -hmm. which is approaching the end of its 10 to 10 year life. Um, so they need to be resurfaced. Resurfacing both is much cheaper than rebuilding mm -hmm. both. So making sure you have regular sort of 10 year cycles is important. And then the field behind that um, is often flooded and swamped and highly utilized by um, the school and youth programs. And so looking at uh, creating another um, synthetic surface there and then creating some stands because uh, and access from the building down to the field level that is accessible right now if there's a child in a, in a wheelchair for instance they have to sort of drive down the parking lot all the way down to get to the track and so there's no direct access from the from the building um, directly down onto the field so this would address accessibility issues that are important to us, um, some curricular issues, and also make the facility much more useful. If we could run uh, games concurrently, which this renovation would allow us to do, we could actually get off the field earlier and have youth programs on the field much earlier because another complaint by the youth programs is they don't have access to the fields until too late at night. So. Um, we're all trying to work together. There's limited field space, and that's why this is a sort of a joint ask. 
um, the school district is sort of sponsoring the warrant, but it is really um, something that uh, Park and Rec has voted and supported, the school committee has voted and supported, and we're asking, again, the, the, the youth programs in town are also supporting. So it's, a, it's sort of a community need, but because it's on a school property, we'll be doing the presentation. Okay. Now, all of these items that we've talked about, these are things that you will be asking for town meeting support for in a couple of weeks. Um, do you, is there, what's the, what's the case? What's the, um, if you could, if you could sort of give town meeting a pre, a pre case, get them warmed up, right? What's the, what's the message to town meeting as you take all of these, these different, you know, physical needs, a forklift, new, new vehicle, new fields, new security stuff, you know, non-tangible things like curriculum review. What's the overall message to town meeting about, about all of these needs? Well, I, I think they're only, they're, they're partial. And so I think the way that we've always worked with the town is um, the town's financial team gives us some parameters in which to work and we really do our best to stick within those parameters. So there was capital money that was made available through the town's free cash um, allotment. And uh, we looked at our priorities and we tend to look at health and safety things first. And you see many health and safety issues there. Curriculum is obviously critical for us. That's the curriculum review process. Um, and so we say, what can we fit in this year underneath that um, dollar amount? And we've accomplished that. So um, we still require town meeting approval, um, but we are asking for, for our warrants um, for things that fit into the money that was allotted for schools to spend. Um, so that's what I would tell town meeting is this, these are our priorities. And you know, they may say, boy, you don't need a van or you, I, you know, and mm -hmm. I can think, think I make the case that we do and it fits into the money that was allotted for schools. And so mm -hmm. I hope they'll be supportive. Ways and Means have, has supported, um, I think all of our warrants. So um, many eyes have looked at it mm -hmm. and I think we'll move forward. The last one, the 6.7, is not something that is included in our allotment and it's a larger community mm -hmm. conversation but I think the quality and maintenance of our fields and parks is an important community conversation. So I think we're gonna have that. And again, we really are trying to partner with uh, Brendan um, at Park and Rec and make sure that you know we're not competing with Park and Rec, that we're working collaboratively um, because we all benefit from having high quality um, fields and parks in town. Well, Dr. Conti, uh, can I check back in with you after town meeting and see how it all went? Uh, you can, and again, the last part of town meeting, and for me, the most important part of town meeting are not our warrants, even though they are critical. Um, our operating budget is also something mm, that is course. coming up that you didn't ask about, and um, our operating budget, again, we were provided a guideline, and we are bringing in our operating budget request um, that, that fits within that guideline. So we really worked hard to do that. It is getting harder and harder for us to do that. Um, and there are still some unknowns that we have to deal with. We have some unsettled contracts, but we are asking town meeting to support um, an operating budget that does fit in with the town's um, request for us to, f to fit under. And again, that was unanimously supported by Ways and Means. So we're hoping that conversation goes well as, you know, in addition to the capital warrants you went over. All right. Uh, thank you, as always, for joining me, um, Dr. Conti. Sydney, thank you. All right. That was another update with Dr. Eric Conti. I'm Sydney Bowles. Thanks for watching.